In this video, I just want to show you guys a bit of how I created some of these effects. This is a kind of extra video to another video I've released on my channel. So if you haven't seen the projector lighting effects video, definitely check that out first before you watch this one. All of this is going to be done after effects, but I'm going to try and keep the process as simple as possible. So the first one I'm going to show you is the animated line grid, which allow me to create shots like this. So the first thing you want to do is create a new composition, uh, name it or whatever you like. Make sure the width and height are set to the native resolution of your projector. And also set whatever frame rate you feel suitable. I also changed the duration, so it's 30 seconds long. Then go up to layer and create a new solid. Change the color to black if it's not on black already. This is just going to be a back background for the animated bars. Change the viewport window settings to 50%. The next thing you want to do is create a line. I just use the rectangle tool. Um, I couldn't find a line tool, so that one just did the job fine. You're then going to want to stretch it out so it's roughly twice the height of the black background. On this new shape layer, you're going to want to reduce your stroke width down to 40. Then scroll down and under transform, put 61 degrees in the rotation box. This will mean it will go perfectly from corner to corner on a 16 by 9 resolution window. You'll then want to recenter your anchor point. Just hit the Y key, grab the anchor point, and then press Control once you get close to the middle of the screen. You should see a little red square come around it. This just confirms that it's been locked to the middle. So back to the Transform dropdown. You're going to want to keyframe the position at zero seconds, and then alter the position of the line so it's in the bottom right-hand corner. You're then going to want to move your timeline on to six seconds. Then just move the line to the top left-hand corner. Once played back, this will just create a scanning line going from the bottom right to the top left of the image. Then go across to your effects box and search for echo. Then drag and drop that echo plug into your line shape layer. Change the echo time to minus one seconds and your number of echoes to 50. Don't go too high on the number of echoes as this will really affect your rendering time. As you can see, that line is now repeating forever. You can then adjust your echo time to increase or decrease the spacing between each line. For mine, I went for 0 0.5 as that was just a really nice balance between light and dark for me. So you're then going to want to add motion blur. To do this, go down to your toggle switch as a mode button. Then just click the box with the three circles above it. And then under the composition settings, you're going to want to go onto the advanced tab and change your samples per frame from 12 up to 64. What this do is massively increase the quality of the lines themselves. I found that on 12 samples, the lines were very kind of choppy and pixelated on the edges, whereas 64 samples were really clean and crisp cut. So the next one I'm going to show you is the line split. This is so basic. Anyone can do this. And this kind of helps you to create effects like this with two large beams of light. So up to composition settings and create a new comp. And I've done exactly the same settings as before. And then create a new black solid to be the background. So you want to grab your rectangle tool, click off the background layer, then drag the rectangle tool just to make a line. Then what I'm doing here is just altering the size of the line so it goes over the edges of the screen. Under the stroke drop down, reduce your stroke width to 50 pixels. So once you've done that, use your align tools to make sure the line is in the center of the screen. You're then going to want to keyframe your stroke width and also your position at zero seconds. Now type in six seconds into the cursor time box. Then move your position to the far left of the screen. You're then going to want to adjust your stroke width so it's back up to 100 pixels. Kind of tweak it so it kind of clips the edge of frame. I'm increasing the stroke width here as this just means that the brightness of that bar will increase as it's moving further out of frame. And I really kind of like that effect. So you're now going to want to go across to 12 seconds. 
Then essentially what I'm gonna do here is copy the keyframes from zero seconds to 12 and 24 seconds. And then also copy the keyframes from six seconds to 18 and 30. And essentially this will just create a repeating back and forth motion. So playing it back, the line looks a little bouncy, a little robotic. To improve this, you're gonna to wanna to add a bit of easing to your keyframes. The easiest way to do this is just to select all your keyframes and then right click, scroll down and click on keyframe velocity. And then I've just put 50 in both the influencers boxes. But you could do 70, 30 or a different split out of 100. So now when you play it back, you'll see that the line slows down as it approaches the edge of frame and the movement just looks a bit more natural. You're then gonna to wanna to put on your motion blur. Once you've done that, duplicate your line shape layer. And then on your new shape layer, go to the transform drop down and under rotation, you're gonna to wanna to type in 180. Select both your shape layers and press U. This will then show you all the keyframes that are on each layer. You're then gonna to wanna to hold down Alt and click the clock next to stroke width. Once you've done that, grab your pit whip and drag it down to the stroke width layer below and just do exactly the same now with position. So now to make any tweaks to those keyframes, it will update it in exactly the opposite direction on the other shape layer. So that's how I created mine. I don't have huge skills in After Effects, but that did the job for me and literally took about five minutes to create. The other great thing is that on the day, you can literally get your shot set up and change these keyframes to make a shot look better. And because these animations are so basic, they only take a couple of seconds to export. So the third animation is just a basic repeating shape animation, and that will create a look like this. So the first thing you want to do is just create a new composition, exactly the same as the previous two, and then create a new black solid to be your background. Click off the back background and then go up to your shape tool and grab the star tool. When you're dragging the shape out, just hold the shift key and that will make sure it's perfectly straight. I'm just toggling it here so you can see. If yours is appearing with more than three edges, I think it defaults to five. What you have to do here is go to the drop down under the shape layer and then change the points from five down to three. You're then gonna to wanna to go to the stroke drop down and change the stroke width from 100 to 30. You're then gonna to wanna to re-centralize your anchor point I just did mine under the transform drop down as the Y key wasn't working for me here. Sometimes on shape layers, it can go a bit funny. And then just use your align layers two window to re-centralize that. And then at zero seconds, you're gonna to wanna to keyframe your inner and outer radius and set them both to zero. And then you're gonna to wanna to toggle the viewer window back to 50%. Now move the cursor across to six seconds. And what I'm doing here is just expanding the inner radius so that it actually goes over the edge of frame and also the outer radius. This will take a little bit of tweaking to get right, but essentially you just wanna make a very large triangle. The main reason I'm doing this over scaling up is so that the stroke width doesn't expand. You then just gonna to wanna to check that your triangle is a perfect triangle. So once you've done that, just toggle your viewer window back to fit. So as I'm scrubbing it back, you can see that it's kind of expanding off the screen. You're now gonna to wanna to go up to your effects and presets box and search for echo. Grab the echo plugin and drop it onto that shape layer. I set my number of echoes to a hundred here and then change the echo time to minus one. Once I play that back, you can now see that the triangle is just growing and slowly expanding off screen in a constant loop. The last thing you want to do is go back to zero seconds and under the transform dropdown, turn on the keyframing for rotation, have it at zero degrees at zero seconds, and then put an extra one in at 30 seconds. So once I play it back, you can actually see that the triangle's expanding and rotating at the same time. And this created some really interesting kind of scanning line effects going up my talent. So with all these animations, I actually designed them so you can add video to them really easily. And that's what I'm gonna show you now in this section. So what I've done is I've got this video off Pexels, which was completely free 1080p file. 
Uh, the great thing about this is there's loads of colors, so it will look really interesting for a projector. So all you have to do is add the video to your composition, then drag it down so it's just below your animated shape layer. Toggle the switches slash modes button. Under track matte, you're just gonna set the first option, which in my case is alpha matte to shape layer one. So now you can see once I play this back, that the video file is now within the white lines instead of behind it. So I hope this video was helpful. It's not something I usually do and let me know in the comments what you thought about it as I kind of want to keep improving these sort of videos and definitely keep an eye on the channel as I have quite a bit more content coming up in the near future.